So this year at the Great Debates meeting in Chicago, we were able to cover important topics in the management of upper GI malignancies, um, esophagus and stomach adenocarcinoma. There's been a lot of excitement and immunotherapy development in this field. And so the best way to uh, learn and to uh, uh, to discuss topics is through debating some of the key points. The first debate in the upper GI uh, malignancies in esophageal and gastric adenocarcinoma was regarding her two directed therapy in perioperative setting in non-metastatic uh, gastroesophageal and gastric adenocarcinoma. As you know, of course, HER2 is a critical biomarker in stage four disease. We routinely test patients for overexpression of HER2 protein or presence of amplification of ERB2 gene. It happens in approximately 20 to 30% of tumors uh, in, uh, in our clinic. And the combination of trastuzumab, which is a monoclonal antibody directed against HER2, chemotherapy, and pembrolizumab, which is anti-PD-1 uh, antibody, is FDA approved as of May of 2021. So we use HER2 directed therapy in routine, uh, routinely in metastatic disease. The purpose of our debate on Thursday was really to review the data for earlier stage disease and to see if there's a use of perioperative therapy in for HER2 disease, or should we consider using adjuvant therapy for HER2 disease? As you know, immunotherapy is FDA approved in adjuvant setting, uh, for nivolumab-based therapy uh, after chemoradiation and surgery for patients with high-risk disease. Um, so we reviewed the data both for pros and cons of using perioperative therapy. The main point that my debate uh, focused, and I was uh, supporting the use of perioperative therapy uh, in early-stage disease, is that clinically these patients present with uh, locally advanced, potentially uh, high risk disease where you know doing surgery first and then doing immunotherapy may not be the best approach uh, and most patients do not tolerate patient uh, treatment in adjuvant setting all that well so this these two uh, concepts are true for any disease, but in, including her 2 positive disease. Um, and then we went on to review the data for first line um, and for locally advanced uh, HER2 positive trials. We reviewed the negative data from RTOG 1010 study that looked at trastuzumab plus chemoradiation in this disease and did not show improvement. Uh, we discussed the topics as to why we think RTOG 1010 was a negative study. It was a relatively small, underpowered study in the patient selection uh, using uh, fish as opposed to uh, IHC likely contributed to that uh, result. And then we went on to uh, review the clinical data to suggest higher path CR rate for combination of her 2 directed agents, such as trastuzumab and pertuzumab, um, the safety and efficacy data for combination of FLOT plus trastuzumab, and our own uh, MSK approach with pembrolizumab, trastuzumab, and chemotherapy that's worked so well in stage four disease and now being translated in early stage disease in clinical trials. Um, the bottom line is her 2 directed therapy is, has a lot of promise, but it's not yet uh, approved in perioperative setting. So this was a debate focused on knowledge and understanding the biology. Um, I think most of our patients do get perioperative chemotherapy um, and then go on to receive other targeted therapies, adjuvant therapy, uh, such as nivolumab. Uh, but it was a nice topic to discuss because HER2 is such an important uh, biomarker that it's critical to test for it in early stage disease as well. And so I really welcomed the opportunity to review that data.